So I ran London Marathon back in 2022 and to say it was an experience was an understatement. Now I still personally struggle to unpack everything that happened in the week leading up to the race and of the race itself. So much went on which we'll talk about at the end of the video. Right now I want to give you guys five things that I took away from that 2022 marathon that I want to implement and make sure I do differently in 2024's edition. And the first thing is for me to take the first three miles easier than I did last time round. Have a look at the elevation graph on screen now. This is where I ran London Marathon in 2022. It's the same elevation graph all the time, but that's where I ran 3.03. Going to unpack the race at the end and give you more information. And then I'll put on screen now the elevation where I ran a 2.40 at Newport Marathon. So you can see the difference there straight away. London Marathon is relatively flat. It's a very flat and fast course. There are a few little kind of uh, lumps and bumps along the way, but overall it's a pretty fast course. But that first three miles really caught me out. I had been warned about it. Now, a lot of the people I speak to don't make anything of the first three miles, and a lot of people warn you about the first three miles. I'm not gonna say it's absolutely horrific at all, because it's not. It's a very, very, very gentle incline for about two, two and a half miles, and then a big steep drop off. But for me, that incline caught me out and I ended up pushing too hard too early. My heart rate got too high. Again, I'll pop two graphs on screen. That's my heart rate after two miles at Newport and then after two miles at London. You can see how drastically higher it is. Now my average heart rate for Newport was much, much lower and for London it was much, much higher. Again, a multitude of reasons, but the main thing is I started off London way too fast. Didn't take that into account. And the thing is, when you get your heart rate up that high that early, you're kind of uh, leading yourself down a path that is very hard to get back from. If you control the start and you control things nice and early, it helps you to run a smoother race long term. And we'll talk more about that later. But yeah, first things first, that first three miles, don't let it catch you out. Just keep calm, get down that steep drop, and then lock in to pace. And the second thing I really struggled with, which I really want to work on in 2024, is dealing with larger crowds. Now, obviously, London can be very, very very, very overwhelming. There are pockets of the course that are a little bit quieter, but a lot of it is very loud and very noisy. And again, we'll talk about more of that later. Dealing with the crowds is going to be something that I need to get used to. I know there's a lot of you guys watching this that are living in cities and are very much used to the hustle and bustle and used to running races where there is more support. For me, it's just really non-existent where I am. A lot of the races I do around where I live over on the west side of the country um, a very, very quiet, low key. And often I can find myself racing. If you've watched my race vlogs, it can feel like a little bit of a time trial. Uh, so support is non-existent. There are ways I'm gonna try and combat that this year. I'm doing Barcelona half marathon in about five weeks, five and a half weeks. So that's gonna be a good test to kind of deal with a bigger city environment again. And I'm just basically putting myself out there and learning to deal with it, being a bit more mindful. There's lots of things that I can do and work on, but essentially I just need to be thrown into these situations more. So if you are a runner that struggles with crowds, my advice to you is get used to it. It's something that takes a bit of time. I'm gonna be trying to do more races with a little bit more higher profile with uh, bigger crowds, I'd really advise you do the same if you can or just be prepared for it. Get used to it and be in, have it in your mind that it can be quite loud, quite noisy and that adrenaline level that you have might be a little bit higher than what it normally is on race day. And number three, relax over Tower Bridge. I'm telling you now, Tower Bridge is one of the most incredible things you will ever experience when you are running the London Marathon, if not the best part of the race. It is absolutely a mind blowing you run along these streets and then you turn to the left and you look up and it is a wall of noise and the most beautiful spectacle uh, that you can imagine don't get me wrong there are plenty of other incredible moments on the London Marathon course but Tower Bridge is unlike anything else and again have a look at my heart rate right there I peaked at 179 going over Tower Bridge now just for reference my threshold is in and around 171 172 ish 173 from years of racing this is what what I've learned this is where I know my threshold roughly is and if I go over that mark I know I'm on borrowed time so to hit 179 going over Tower Bridge I got way too excited so excited and again that just shows naivety on my part Sometimes you just got to hold your hand up and show where your flaws were. Again, we'll talk more about the situation of the race and everything that was going on but at that moment in time I just got soaked up into it all I tried to maintain pace and although when I look at my splits my pace was slightly lower going over Tower Bridge I have to say I didn't feel like I was just backing off I was trying to maintain effort going up there 
And the result of that meant that I just went way past my threshold. And again, at that point, I'm just on borrowed time. So as much as I would love everyone to have the most amazing race in the world, if you are someone that's on maybe on the conservative side, maybe someone a little bit like me, just be aware that Tower Bridge can really catch you out. I'd rather for me next time go over it, absorb it all, enjoy it, back off a tiny bit, keep the effort level a bit lower and just get over the other side and feel good. There's a reason for that and I'll tell you that now. Mars 14 to 18 is the reason for that. It's a wonderful part of the course from my perspective. Everyone else that probably runs it a lot and is used to big cities uh, will say it's probably the most boring part of the race. For me, when you get over Tower Bridge, you round the corner, everything calms down a little bit and it's so surreal because you are just in this sea of noise going over the bridge you turn the corner and you just have a thin row of support and then it peters out and you can get about three or four miles in before you hit canary wharf that's very calm and very relaxed and i remember distinctly thinking at that moment in time my back went just after 13 miles in the last call in the last time i did it but i remember thinking in that stretch this is a nice part of the course. I can kind of regroup, regather, uh, regain some momentum and just calm, be a bit more mindful. It was a really good part of the course for me anyway. I really, really enjoyed it. Now, when we're running through London and you guys are running out there and I'm sure a lot of you are gonna be chipping in in the comments with your experience. Um, it's a, there are sometimes parts in a marathon where you just need to regain composure. Having that wall of noise or having so much support can be very intense from start to finish. So using these little pockets of areas where it's a little bit less intense, it is where somewhere you can gather your thoughts. Um, is really, really important. For me, it's gonna be somewhere in 2024, this year, that I earmark that I just calm. I either kick on at this point because I've held back and I feel good, or it's a part where I've gone over Tower Bridge, I just need to calm for a mile or two and then I can lock in. So I'm earmarking 14 to 18, it's a good place to regroup. And number five, I wanna use the same fueling strategy that I did at Newport and racing strategy uh, for London so that I can enjoy Embankment, Westminster. That was probably my second favorite part of the course. A lot of you out there are probably saying, what about the finish? What? The finish is amazing, don't get me wrong, but I've been to London so many times now or it's get, it feels like a lot of times that I'm very used to Buckingham Palace it's a magical place it's amazing but that stretch along the embankment uh, coming up to Big Ben in front of you it's honestly it's one of the most incredible things now as a spectator last year I actually navigated myself to a few different places on the course did a filming produced a vlog and I got the underground to Westminster and I exited on exit one at Westminster which is out towards the boat trip area and if you go out there you end up on the River Thames side of that strip and you're in and around mile 24 and a half to 25 along there and trust me there's barely no support along that side of the road it's all on the other side and you have plenty of space I had loads of room to film it was amazing uh, so if you're looking to spectate and see your loved ones towards the end that's a great place to go just a little side note but for me as a runner I want to enjoy that I remember coming out of there having gone through an incident around mile 23 again we'll touch on that shortly but I came out of there and I remember trying to soak in the beauty, but my head was absolutely all over the place. So if I managed to feel well and take a sensible strategy, which was to calm the first three miles, lock in for sort of a 10 mile marathon chunk, repeat that again. Uh, so I'm at 23 miles and then I've got three miles to the finish. It was a good way for me to break up the race. I'll make sure I put on screen the laps that I did. I was manually lapping my watch. Uh, it was just a great way to break it up. Hopefully I'll get to Westminster and Embankment and along that area before turning down uh, the mall just to enjoy all of it soak it in and yes yeah, soak it all up so again that's going to be my fifth thing that I took away so let me now give you some context as to why I chose those five points the London Marathon 2022 was a bit of an experience for me and the reason it was a whirlwind was leading into that race obviously I got in for a good for age time I was absolutely buzzing sadly earlier in the year uh, I lost my sister to a brain tumor and I also lost my mum uh, to myeloma blood cancer all within seven weeks of each other it was a really a uh, crazy uh, period of time it was like March and June early June and just literally those three months were really really tough so I kind of just built up to London in the best way that I could but five days out from London my back absolutely gave out on me and after a lot of discussions with a lot of people I was a very emotional uh, person at the time an emotional wreck to be honest with you it seems like there was a lot of emotional tension that I was carrying in in me and my body and it just came out in my weak spot which was my back I was just doing that taper work 
out, four by three minutes and bam, it's like I got shot by a sniper, lower back locked up and I was just down on the floor. I was with Lee uh, and it was not a pleasant experience at all. And in hindsight, I probably shouldn't have run the race, but my physio was absolutely amazing. She patched me together as best as she could. And I got to the start line, not in a great place, not in a great way, but I was able to run it at least. And so I started off and I'd done all this training at goal pace and I couldn't even hit the paces that I wanted to hit. Uh, I was very restricted in my gait cycle, but at least I could run without too much pain. I was just feeling a bit stiff from the back injury. Um, and yeah, I just, my heart rate was higher because of that. I think because my form was compromised. So I wasn't able to execute the race that I wanted to. Uh, and then as I went over Tower Bridge and down the other side, I just got caught out by a step down. Uh, I was just running and I just noticed there was a speed bump. I came off the speed bump uh, and my foot dropped a little bit sharper than I thought and it just jarred my back and the pain came back. And then the second half of the race was just my back permanently sort of spasming or locking up. It was not a pleasant experience. That couple then with the unfortunate incident of coming across a chap that sadly passed away at mile 23 24 under the last tunnel as you approach the embankment he had a, a cardiac arrest uh, we were all at the scene we were one of the first people at the scene i got the the i was chasing the medics there were other people chasing the medics it was a very 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 intense moment uh, i was i was very uh, sort of shaken at that point just wanted to see my wife and kids uh, and get to the finish line and that's what i mean that last three miles i was just wasn't really focusing on the beauty of what the course had to offer but thinking about what had just happened and how life is so precious so it was a very very crazy week leading up to it just having all that emotional tension going into the race having my back go um having my back go just after tower bridge and then obviously coming across that situation it was just incredible and i still think about that runner every single day some of you might remember the video that i made it was a really tough one to make but it was really good to make it and share the story a lot of people have been in similar situations and I just want to say, as I said, I still think about that runner to this day on a very regular occasion. So I'm really hoping that in 2024, I can kind of be calm, be relaxed. There's a lot of emotional tension that I'll be going into the race with and I'll be aware of that, but I'm already being very mindful about it. And I'm being very sort of positive with the way I talk to myself about the race, race strategies, and just telling myself to be calm and yeah, approach it as a brand new race and fingers crossed all will be well. So I hope that gives you a bit of context as to those five things, but hopefully those five things help you as well in terms of the course if you're new to London Marathon definitely be calm on those first three miles and then yeah pick out the pockets along the race uh, they're a little bit calmer they really do help just to gather your thoughts and just to keep calm uh, so that when those big moments come like Tower Bridge like Canary Wharf like uh, the embankment into the finish straight it's mind-blowing it really is one of the most special races so I'm really excited less than 16 weeks to go now and I'd love to hear your top tips if you've run London once if not more please do share them in the comments below what would you do differently next time or did you have the race of your life at London do let me know in the comments below It'd be great to hear from you down there that's it from me today guys I hope you enjoyed the video if you did please do consider giving it a like share it with your friends and of course subscribe to the channel for weekly running content I'll see you in the next one until then